Hello and welcome to Auten Math. In this edition we're going to talk about properties of real numbers. But first we need to back up and talk about what a real number is. So what is a real number? A real number consists of both rational numbers and irrational numbers. Those are the two subsets. Well, what's a rational number? Well, a rational number can be written as a quotient of integers or a fraction. So an example would be a half, three quarters, three eighths, seven eighths, etc. A rational number can also be a decimal that terminates or repeats. For example, 3.12 or the repetitive decimal 3.121212, etc. An irrational number is not a quotient of integers, so you cannot write an irrational number as 3 eighths or 1 half. That's a rational number. An example of <clears throat> an irrational number would be the square root of 2. An irrational number is also can be a decimal number that does not terminate <clears throat> uh, and does not repeat. An example would be pi. So pi, the decimals go on forever. They have no ending, at least none that anyone has identified. So irrational numbers have no end and have no pattern. So let's move on and talk about the properties of real numbers. <clears throat> There are six different properties, uh, one for addition and one for multiplication. So for real numbers, a closure property of addition just says that if you have a real number A and a real number B, and you add them together, your result is going to be a real number. The same for the closure property of multiplication. If you have a real number A times a real number B, then your result is going to be a real number. The commutative property of addition says that A plus B is the same as B plus A. And the community property of multiplication is a times b is equal to b times a. Now, if you've gone through algebra, this should be common sense or easy for you, and that's good. But it's helpful to know the properties behind the applications and the processes that you will be going through as part of Algebra 2. The associative property of addition just says a plus b in parentheses plus c is equal to a plus b plus c in parentheses. And the associative property of multiplication says that a times b in parentheses times c is equal to a times b times c in parentheses. It just says if you have three or more real numbers that are all being multiplied together, it doesn't matter in what order you multiply them. The identity property of addition says that a plus 0 is equal to a. The identity property of multiplication says that a times 1 is equal to a. The inverse property of addition says that if you add a, a number to the opposite of that number, so a plus minus a, then your result is going to be 0. The inverse property of multiplication says that if you multiply a times the reciprocal of itself, then you'll end up with a value of 1, assuming that a is not 0. And finally, the distributive property of both addition and multiplication says that a times b plus c in parentheses is the same as a times b plus a times c. You need to know this particular property. You will use it uh, both going backwards for a b times or a b plus a c is equal to a times b plus c and going forwards as I described as the property in algebra 2. Okay, now we're going to talk about <clears throat> simple subtraction and division, just what they mean. Subtraction is just defined as adding the inverse of a value. So the opposite or additive inverse of any number is the negative of that number. So the additive inverse of negative 4 is 4, and the additive inverse of 4 is negative 4. Division is defined as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal or multiplicative, multiplicative inverse of any non-zero number is 1 over that number. So an example of mi, which is multiplicative inverse of 3, is 1 over 3. And the multiplicative inverse of 1 fourth is 4. 